Hi, I'm Joe Everett. This is Everett Barbecue, in Indianapolis, Indiana, and we're about to make a bunch of barbecue rub. Okay, folks, after a big weekend of cooking, I am fresh out of rub. I uh, just put a brisket on, so low on beef rub, uh, low on AP, and uh, no more barbecue rub left. So I'm gonna do what I do about every, once every three weeks is make a, a, a bunch of rub. It's something I love to do. I've, it's been, I've been doing it since I started barbecue, and I think it's half the fun is defining your flavor profile, what you'd like to add, what you want to bring out and uh, whatever cut you're putting on the on the grill, on your smoker, um, whatever you're cooking on. You, it's part of your experience and like I said, it just adds to the fun. So today, um, as I mentioned, uh, our all-purpose rub, uh, the barbecue rub and beef rub. I'm gonna tell you what I put in, how I go about it, and just why uh, I'm adding what seasoning I do. Let's get after it. Okay. We're gonna start with the AP. Um, I still have a good store of it. You guys wanna make your own rubs at home. You know, this probably used to be some chives or a whole thing of peppercorns, I don't know. And then once she's empty, rip it off, write her down, and you've got a new shaker. This, it's just uh, one and a half uh, teaspoons of granulated garlic. So this is the big one. I use granulated garlic. Um, I'm gonna make a double recipe here so that one and a half would be doing three teaspoons. My quick hill going mad. One tablespoon of kosher salt. Now, the all purpose rub is where most of my salt comes from, and uh, my barbecue for pork, chicken, uh, my ribs. So this is a double recipe. Let me just go a little. A little bit of kosher goes a long way. And then it's probably a tablespoon of ground pepper. So equal parts salt and pepper. Doubling the recipe again, so oh no, I went heavy on the pepper. Ah, nothing wrong with that. Now, the finer ingredients: a half tablespoon of onion powder um, brings out the savory. Uh, again, really good for your poultry, your pork, um, and this AP. I tell you, I. Uh, put this on a lot and you know I put this as well as barbecue on my ribs I'm sure you've seen in the video but uh, this all-purpose by itself really does a number really nice um, watch it on this onion powder it's got a strong nose on her that was slick so that was a whole teaspoon but the recipe calls for half I am doubling it you probably get tired of me saying that and now just a little touch of oregano. We're going quarter teaspoon. Double recipe would be half. But again, you know, one of my favorite things to do with this, you want a lot of oregano, just enough for color and bring out a little bit of that. Nice clean. I love it. I'll put this on. My brother and I do wings and I just use the AP. Put it on there, we throw it on the grill, scald that skin of the chicken, and then um, throw it off the high heat, put it on low, 
spin those bad boys in a bowl with whatever sauce we feel like, and that's, uh, boy, there's no way, better way to do wings in my mind. There's still some nice grains in there, and I really, this you could pretty much put on anything, but like I said, when I do pork, chicken, love the ribs, I'll start with this, sometimes just do this, but this is where my salt, my savory, come from. So we uh, add it to the rest, and I don't usually use a ton because, you know, a little bit of this salt goes a long way, but we'll put this in this. Salt and the pepper, they, they settle it a little differently. And that's another reason I use um, this previously ground black pepper. When I started making my own rubs, um, I assumed fresh ground pepper from gut would be the way to go. Not necessarily the case for a, a finer blend and a, and a more judicious spread. I, I, I find that previously ground, it's less coarse, so the rest of your rub doesn't sift down to the bottom while your coarse, uh, more grainy corns uh, kind of rise to a different level. It's, uh, this provides, I think, a little bit better blend. So that's our all-purpose rub. I'll probably I'll put the directions on the screen, maybe, or at least click down in the description, show more, and we'll get you started on the AP rub. Moving on to barbecue. Okay, now it's time for my favorite rub. Barbecue rub. Everybody loves it. Uh, what you're looking for is uh, a little bit of the savory, but more of the smoky, more of the sweet. And certainly for pork, uh, ribs, and then chicken, of course, you want a nice color. So that's why uh, a lot of these ingredients are, are coming in. Um, as any rub does, uh, simply for the fact that in case you use it by itself, I uh, start my basic batch will have half teaspoon of kosher salt, but we're gonna make a double batch, of course. That's what we do here is make double batches. So one whole teaspoon, or tablespoon, excuse me. But yeah, a whole tablespoon for our little double batch. Yikes, it's a lot of salt. And of course, ground black pepper. We'll go, uh, it's one tablespoon in my recipe, but this is a double. At this point, I do like to take a bit of a time out and um, just knock up any chunks. I do not like chunks in my rub. I and mean, you know, you're gonna put a rub on there and claim, oh, well, I didn't have the time to break it up. There's a few chunks, but that's okay. It's not okay. I'm gonna tell you. We take our rub serves. for the fun part. The regular batch calls for one tablespoon of dark chili powder, I believe. Yes, so we'll do two. This really gives it a nice smoky flavor. It brings out some spice. And the dark chili powder, I mean, look at that color. It's, it's almost like a Beautiful burgundy, you know, I just, who wouldn't know that? And then, smoked paprika. You can use regular paprika, nothing wrong with that. Hmm. I will say for these Spice Island folks, 
You may pay an arm and a leg for their spices, but they do pack it to the brim. So that is one tablespoon of paprika, and you know what? You can use as much paprika as you feel you need. That's the best part about barbecue. It is, uh, what do they say in Italian? A piacere, as you like it. But of course, they're, um, Paprika is going to give you that nice, pretty red color. And then the smoked paprika, as you can assume, it's also going to add a little bit of that dark, nasty, smoky purple. And now for the kick, where we get a lot of our spice. Uh, and more color, too. But uh, you got to have the ground cayenne tablespoon of it. We're doubling the recipe as you know. And... Okay. Now a little cayenne does go a long way, but when I barbecue, I want to taste it. So we're doing two heaping tablespoons in our double recipe. But yes, for your single recipe, go ahead. And the final capper, and very important, I think, uh, a little bit of ground mustard. The mustard, uh, half of a teaspoon. So, we'll go full teaspoon for this recipe. Hopefully that's not unbearable on the oven. There we go. And that's your basic rub right there. Mix, mix, mix. And again, this is just, you know, half the fun of it. You sit there in your idle time watching a little television, break out your spices. Checking emails on the computer. Check, you know, break out the old seasonings. Try a new rub. Who knows? I mean, you could find something that uh, really no one's got in the store. No one's got available to you. It could blow your mind. But you definitely want to sift in through the bottom and make sure you're getting these little granules of brown sugar throughout everything. And it's getting a really nice color in there. Oh no, that's coming out. Hopefully it's close up can something but but you do not want to skimp on the effort here to break up and really have a fine mix you know we put these fine ingredients in here so don't take any time out really go after it because you don't want to be sprinkling this on your ribs and have a big old clumpy fall in the middle. And everyone's like, what's that? What's wrong with your rub? Nothing's wrong with my rub. It's awesome. And actually, it's looking kind of awesome. Yeah, forgive this table, it's a little messy, but this is just your standard outdoor barbecue fold table. Um, See many a cookout, and it's served well, and it's serving again today. So, there we are with the rub. The only complaint some people may have is with the salt I use. I probably should just use your standard Morton's iodized. It would probably provide a better blend, but I do love the coarseness of that kosher salt and the flavor it adds. So that's the reason for any sort of um, clumps in the detail you may be able to see in the close-up and just, but, this is a very nice, smoky, sweet barbecue rub, and we're going to go ahead and add that to a much needed empty bin. Yeah, the sun's come out. It's a good thing too. Start 
Okay. It's a good little store of um, barbecue rub. And let's see, I think this used to be uh, chives. I'm not sure, maybe some parsley. Yes, definitely give it a good shake. And this will clump up because there's so much sugar. It just naturally does. But I'm gonna tell you folks, this six months, just keep it in a dark, you know, in the cabinet. Nice little cool place. Six, seven, who knows, eight months, this will keep. Well, I don't know, last a month. If that. But uh, yeah, there's a nice. Let's see this. Uh, Good red, and I tell you, you put this on ribs, it's gonna add a beautiful color and a, a, a tasty flavor profile to it. So try it at home, you won't be sorry. Okay, we're gonna wrap up with um, my beef rub, and we need a little bit more of the beef rub, as you can see, uh, specifically today, because we put a um, brisket on the smoker and it required a substantial amount of beef rub. A uh, big reason for a lot of this is, again, um, a lot more savory than sweet. You're going less sweet than your barbecue rub for your beef. Um, I would assume most people do. I still do put sugar in it. Some people uh, watching may think that's a sin. I still think beef needs some sugar, but I certainly don't put as much as I do on the barbecue. So uh, I'm just gonna make a, single batch of it. I'll stick to the recipe. How's that? That's a novel concept, I know. Okay, okay. It was one third cup of brown sugar. And at this point, um, I'm gonna go ahead and sift it first, break it down, no chunks and clumps, um, press it up against the bowl. That helps. I think this presses out any potential clumps. And then once you sort of flatten it like this, then you can break out that mini whisk again. Oh, if the mini whisk knew how much I favored it over the other whisks. Hmm. I think it does. Who doesn't love? Brisket and brown sugar. With a brisket on a cooker, college football in the store. Hmm. A little bit of Ooh. two tablespoons smoked paprika. And you know why we're going here. The color, the flavor, the smokiness. extra paprika, I've never heard anyone. But yeah, this is the basic recipe, not a double, so we're just going. Two tablespoons paprika, and two tablespoons black pepper. Beef likes pepper and salt. But I like pepper a lot. I like pepper a lot. So really, we do two heaping tablespoons of pepper. I would say heaping, but um, they pray full. All right, and the pepper not only um, with the uh, spice, the little bit of heat turn up, that's what gives you your bark, uh, your, your pepper, your fine pepper there too. Again, I stopped using ground pepper for the coarseness. This I find blends a lot better. <clears throat> so two parts, uh, two tablespoons of the hapa, one tablespoon of kosher salt, Tablespoons garlic, granulated garlic, if you can get it. 
granulated. If you've got garlic powder, it's not a big deal. I prefer the granulated. Onion powder and the garlic, you're looking at very savory notes. Mind that onion powder though. She'll get you. Mm. Three quarter teaspoon of mustard powder, yes. I like mustard. I'm just gonna use the whole teaspoon of a three quarter plate. I believe I got rid of the ground mustard. Criminal. Yeah. It's about three quarters. A little bit of a teaspoon there. <clears throat> and of course, we couldn't have a rub around here. Not everybody's favorite, a little ground cayenne. Now this is as much as you like, and there's no doubt what this is giving you two things, color and some kick. Cayenne will give you the kick. Ooh, we dropped a little extra cayenne. And now, for the fun part. A quarter teaspoon of cumin or cumin, some people say. Be very careful, a little cumin goes a long way. So that's why it's just a quarter tablespoon in this. And yeah, the cumin gives it a nice dusty, smoky, depeated, real intense. It adds some heat, but not a lot of spice. It's more just, like I said, a very nice dust it adds to it. It'll provide your bark and then the addition, the tenderizer and the bark saver, celery seed, y'all. You gotta put some celery seed in your beef rub. Uh, not only for what it can do for beef uh, from a tenderness standpoint, but also more, most important. Uh, not a lot, of course, but this is just additional. It, it's like bib peppercorns. They uh, really adds to the bark that you're gonna do. So you're doing your beef rib, you're doing your beef brisket. Add a little celery seed to your beef rub and see how that treats you. Now we mix. And we'll give it another mix and I think we are. I'm not ready to add it to the rest of our beef rub. are um, different in color, different in texture. But these are my three uh, basic crew. And uh, I get asked a lot of people, what'd you put on that? And this is exactly what I put on. It's real simple. It's I'm pretty sure it's basically everyone else's rubs they make, but uh, in the proportions I like and what I like to put on it and bring out my meats on my smokers. Hope this helped. <laughs>